In this video, we will look at how we can solve equations for x when the variable is appearing on both sides of the equation. There still is only one solution that will make this equation true when we plug it in for x. And the process we will go through in order to identify that value is very much based on what we've seen before. To set this up, let's suppose we've got four x's on the left, which we represented with these little strips, and then six negatives. On the right side, we see we have two x's, and then ten positives. Again, we've got a similar problem, but it's difficult to tell which direction we want to move things. In the past, we've always moved things away from x, but the variable's on both sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of x's on one side. It would make sense to move the one with the fewest number of x's. So if I cross off two x's on the left, or I'm sorry, on the right, we'll also cross off two x's on the left to stay balanced, and we've kind of still got that same process going on, moving all the x's to one side. Now we can solve this problem like always by introducing six positives to get the x strips all on their own. Six positives. And then we can see we need to split this into two groups. Two groups then, with eight and eight each, and we see each x is representing the same amount of space as eight. This is the same exact pattern we've seen followed before. The only difference is now we're moving the variables to the opposite side of the equation. Balancing through the equal sign, how we can represent this algebraically is realizing we've got four x's on the left and two x's on the right. Let's move the smaller one. Get rid of the smaller one, or the two x's, two positive x's with two negative x's on both sides. Notice as we do this, we will line up like terms, so the two x's subtract out to zero, and we're left with two x minus six, and ten on the right. Now it's a simple two-step equation, which we can solve in much the same way we did before, by adding six to both sides, giving us two x equals sixteen, and then finally dividing by two to give us our final answer, x equals eight. Let's take a look at one more example as we do this. We have negative three x plus nine equals six x minus twenty-seven. There is one number that makes this, these two expressions equal to each other. And again, we can find it by moving all the variables to the same side of the equation, and then solving the two-step equation. We've discussed that it probably would be most beneficial to move the smaller one, and since a negative three is very small, the opposite of three negative x's would be to introduce three positive x's on both sides. The three positive x's and the three negative x's will subtract out, giving us nine equals six x plus three x, or nine x, minus twenty-seven. We can now solve the remaining two-step equation by adding twenty-seven to both sides, so the twenty-seven subtract out, giving us thirty-six equals nine x, and finally dividing both sides by nine to get x equals four. We can check this answer by replacing both x's with the four, and hopefully we'll get the same thing. Negative three times four plus nine, we hope is the same as six times four, minus twenty-seven. Doing the multiplication on each side gives us negative twelve plus nine equals twenty-four minus twenty-seven. And sure enough, when we combine, we get negative three equals negative three. It checks for our solution.